Colombia has hosted, provided international protection, assistance, and lasting solutions to refugees and other forcibly displaced persons since opening its first settlements in 1966 and 1971 in Mayukwayukwa and Meheva, respectively. These settlements also shelter some of the most protracted displaced persons, former refugees from Angola and Rwanda. Currently, the majority of refugees live in three designated settlements, namely Meheva, Mayukwayukwa, and Mantapala, with others dispersed in Lusaka and other areas across the country. In continuity with this past modus, in recent years, Zambia made a number of landmark commitments at the UN Leaders' Summit in 2016 and the Global Refugee Forum in 2019 and adopted the Global Compact on Refugees and its Comprehensive Refugee Response Framework, which were endorsed by the UN General Assembly in 2016 and 2018, respectively. These commitments are in line with the pledge to leave no one behind in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the 7th National Development Plan, and in the upcoming 8th National Development Plan. The commitment to implement the Global Compact on Refugees is at the highest level within the UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR, with its High Commissioner, Filippo Grandi, expressing at different fora the need for inclusion and multi-stakeholder engagement in assisting the refugees and the host community on a long-term basis. We need to have a much bigger coalition uh, of actors that respond to refugee crisis, not just the humanitarian organizations, but also development organizations, international financial institutions. The World Bank led the way in this response with very innovative approaches. The private sector that can do a lot in the areas of employment, in the areas of sustainable energy. Um, the, civil society, NGOs, academia itself. So the, the idea of the compact is really that the response to a phenomenon like forced displacement, so comprehensive and complex, needs to be comprehensive and complex, and need to involve more energies, more resources than the traditional ones of the humanitarian departments of uh, uh, governments. The Commissioner for Refugees in the Ministry of Home Affairs leads the implementation of the Comprehensive Refugee Response in collaboration with the UN Refugee Agency UNHCR and with support from other line ministries, other UN agencies, international financial institutions, international and national NGOs, academia, traditional authorities, the private sector, faith-based organizations, refugees and host communities, and other members of the civil society. We have made strides in ensuring that everyone gets involved in refugee affairs. And uh, uh, we have, over time, uh, received support not only from humanitarian organizations, but also from the private sector that have shown interest in implementing some programs in the, in the refugee settlements as well as uh, the host communities. And uh, government is uh, open to other actors coming together uh, with the government as well as the international community uh, to see to it that uh, refugee uh, matters are dealt with in a holistic manner. With support from all partners and stakeholders, Substantial progress has been achieved towards improved delivery of protection and basic services, including health, education, water and sanitation and sports, as well as livelihood opportunities, and a solid foundation has been laid for more effective inclusion and other better coexistence between refugees and hosts. Government has ensured that refugees are treated like uh, the local people and this has been a, a practice not only uh, in terms of the pro providing services but also in terms of ensuring that refugees have access 
to documentation and they are considered within the district development plans as well as the provincial development plans and above at national level. Various government specialized departments are providing services in the three refugee settlements and Lusaka. To this end, government has deployed about 350 workers on its payroll to work in the refugee settlements as teachers, nurses, clinical staff, midwives, agriculture extension officers, water, sanitation and hygiene experts, police officers, forestry officers, community development social welfare officers, livestock officers, and environmental health technicians. In addition, the government of Zambia is working to further include the needs of refugees when planning and budgeting for communities that host them. Furthermore, to ensure inclusiveness and that no one is left behind, the government embarked on a local integration program for Angolans, initially and later Rwandans. Working with the UNHCR, the government has mobilized various stakeholders to provide humanitarian and development assistance to refugees and the host communities. Within the context of the joint United Nations program supporting refugee response in Zambia, the Office of the United Nations Resident Coordinator has been in the lead in mobilizing specialized UN agencies to provide a wide spectrum of assistance to refugees and host communities in Zambia. The UN in Zambia remains committed in working with the government, the private sector, civil society and all stakeholders to step up humanitarian response and longer term development interventions to all persons that deserve our collective support and attention. The UN will continue to leverage the wide experience, expertise, and resources of various UN agencies in to improve the lives of refugees, former refugees, and their Zambian hosts. This is in line with the comprehensive refugee response framework, which calls for burden and responsibility sharing in dealing with refugee situations using a whole of society and a whole of government approaches. UNHCR, working with the government, plays a key role in coordinating the inclusion program in Zambia through stakeholder engagement. UNHCR, together with the whole of government of Zambia, development partners, faith-based organization, academia, the civil society, has been mobilizing strongly to address the growing needs of refugees and the immediate Zambian host. Allow me once again to say a big massive thank you to the government of Zambia, to the people of Zambia for remaining hospitable and for to continue hosting refugees despite their own challenges. We appeal to all to join efforts because Everybody can bring, whether resources, whether the skills, whether money, everything counts so that we can alleviate the suffering of these people. In Zambia, to push the inclusion agenda, the government, several organizations, donor embassies, agencies, faith-based entities are involved in the refugee program providing humanitarian and long-term development assistance. To run its programs in support of government, UNHCR receives voluntary financial, material and other support from various donors who include governments. We have been extending financial contributions of over 50 million US dollars in this area since 2012 in Zambia through UN agencies such as UNHCR, UNDP, UN Habitat, and UNICEF. On this occasion, we would like to announce that this year, the government of Japan decided to support the project by UNHCR titled Protection and Multisectoral Assistance for Persons of Concern in the Republic of Zambia. To support those who are most vulnerable, I am happy that the government of Japan is able to continue to stand by refugees and former refugees 
as it remains as our priority. Specialized UN agencies are providing assistance to refugees and host communities in sectors such as water and sanitation, sustainable livelihoods, food, cash-based interventions, education, health and many more. The period that refugees uh, spent in their new location, in their host country, uh, average around 17 years, which actually means that we have to begin looking for long-term solutions to the problem that refugees and other displaced persons face. We need to move away from short-term survival strategy into something that look at the long-term uh, needs, livelihood, and of course, uh, providing opportunity for education for children and also uh, income generating activities. As part of the United Nations family and working closely with uh, UNHCR, UNICEF helped to support the government of the Republic of Zambia to provide services to the Congolese refugees who crossed into the country in 2017 and 2018. The support provided to the Congolese included construction of school facilities, a health center, a youth center, providing of child protection services, including the construction and provision of water and sanitation services. The education sector has benefited from support by academia and related institutions to ensure access to quality education through the support of stakeholders. We have been proud and happy to work with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in, in that they do sponsor their students uh, to our university. We have uh, almost 15 students, active students from uh, the refugee agents. And it, we have also given them 10 full scholarships in the last one year five for the January intake and five for the July intake. And we also intend to grow this partnership by engaging in reaching out together and forming a memorandum of understanding, which we should be signing so that we can grow this partnership and make sure that more refugees have access to this transformative and excellent uh, education from Cavendish University Zambia. During the time of the COVID-19 pandemic, the private sector has played a key role in the inclusion program by benefiting refugees, host communities and others of concern through provision of education tools. We partnered with uh, UNICEF where they procured uh, in excess of 300 devices that were loaded with our content as well as the power solutions, which is uh, solar power banks. Yeah, solar power banks. Uh, so these were to be distributed in a number of uh, uh, refugee camps, targeting obviously the, the young ones that are migrating from other countries and seeking uh, refugee here in Zambia. So why we thought this was a, a good partnership was that uh, um, the, the, the kids that are moving from those war-torn countries and coming into Zambia needed to catch up with what they had lost because they've been away from the classroom for quite a long period of time. So with our content, which is in English and local languages, and also them coming from countries where English is not spoken, but other languages, it makes them easy, uh, it makes it very easy for them to actually grasp the concept faster because our content is actually animated, voiced, and also localized, so which means all the examples that are in the content is uh, something that they can actually easily relate to. And also in terms of learning the language, since it's voiced, it's easy for them to actually uh, learn the language faster. Jewel of Africa has provided on-the-job training in the lapidary skills to some refugee youths through an apprenticeship program. Two are currently on a long-term contractual engagement and the company is working to expand the apprenticeship to more youth. When you, UNHCR approached us, we thought we'd try to emulate the good work already done by so many other institutions and the government of Zambia and help to train the people of concern in some of these artisanal ways of, uh, of life. We took on, if I remember correctly, about eight 
refugees to enter into into the into the apprenticeship program, but ended up uh, with five, of which two finished their apprenticeship program and two were retained here on a full-time basis. Church-based organizations have not been left behind in responding to the calls of refugees and the hosting community. We have been providing um, um, watch services to the refugee communities as well as um, reaching out to the outlying uh, host communities. So far, NACRO has built um, 376 uh, toilet units with uh, shower, adjoining shower rooms in Mantapala refugee uh, settlement towards the refugees. But we have also reached out to the host communities as well, wherein we've had about uh, 36 host community members who have been trained in uh, financial literacy. Traditional leaders have supported inclusion and coexistence between refugees and hosts by sharing local resources and services with refugees in their chiefdoms and providing traditional leadership to the communities in their areas who include refugees. Every one of us is a potential refugee and therefore you cannot afford to be harsh to those that have found themselves in the circumstances they are in Mehewa and elsewhere. President Edgar Chagwalungu did mention, I think there is need that we expedite and form, formulate laws that are going to be user-friendly to these our brothers and sisters. Sport is a way to heal, develop and grow, especially for people fleeing conflict or persecution as well as those who have experienced trauma. Sport continues to be integrated in the national systems. In Meheba and Mayukwayukwa, soccer teams mostly comprising refugees, Zambians and former refugees have been registered and affiliated to the Football Association of Zambia FAS and participate in provincial leagues and national competitions. Some teams are competing in the FAS Provincial Divisions 1, 2, and 3. However, there are some challenges hindering the process. They include limited sports infrastructure. It was in, I think, in 2019-2020 when we entered in Division 3. We played at uh, the province level and we were among the top, we were the top of the table actually. And uh, this uh, season, 2020 and 2021, we are playing in Division 2 and we are among the top four. And hopefully uh, next season we are going to, to be in Division 1. As the inclusion program under the Global Compact on Refugees in Zambia moves forward, there have been some achievements and challenges, especially in the need for more stakeholder engagement. This is an international school because you find we have... Uh, our fellow non-Zambians, we have former Angolian refugees, we have Brundis, we have Rwandis, and we have all our Zambians. UNHCR is a key player, one of our most key player partners in this exercise, especially where education is concerned. We have got uh, three facilities, which is uh, namely Mayukwaukwa 1, Clinic 1, Mayukwaukwa 2, Clinic 2, and uh, Shibanga. So three of them, they are in the... Uh, settlement in Mayukwayukwa. So the three facilities they do cater for population not only in the settlement area but also population in the surrounding area, I mean Zambian population around that area. Uh, we are very happy with the, our partners that have come through uh, to assist uh, in putting up services and to improve the lives of refugees in terms of livelihoods, in terms of water uh, and, and sanitation. Uh, as well as in trying to uplift the lives of refugees in the settlement. But there are so many uh, areas that still remain uh, unattended to. Therefore, we would want and we appeal to everyone that is able and everyone that is, uh, has a heart for, for refugees and the host community 
to come up to help us to make sure that we try to uh, improve conditions in the settlement. <music>